you don't need expensive software to do print on demand. In this video, I'm gonna walk through PhotoP. PhotoP, I'll put the link in the video description below. It's completely free. It's a Photoshop clone. And I'm gonna walk through an overview on the main things to use so you can get up and running and you can create designs that sell in the print on demand world. It's actually pretty easy once you get the hang of it, but I've got some tips and tricks. Let's jump in. If we're just meeting for the first time, my name is Zen Water Cooler. The channel is Zen Water Cooler. I've also got a sister channel called Crafty Stacks, and both channels are mine, all me, all the time. So I've got lots of videos about print on demand here on this Zen Water Cooler channel. So I encourage you to subscribe so you never miss an episode. Okay, so PhotoP does not need any software to install. It's an online website and it clones or looks like Photoshop. And you're gonna notice right away, we've got these weird little ads on the right hand side, very annoying. And so if you wanna get rid of these ads, there is actually an extension that you can download in Chrome. Here's what the app looks like. You can just Google Chrome Web Store or go to the Chrome Web Store. It's called Remove Ads from PhotoP. You can then click Available on Chrome. So I would encourage you to use Google Chrome when you're using PhotoP. Okay, so here's what PhotoP looks like in Mozilla, not great. And here's what PhotoP looks like in Google Chrome, no ads. Let's get going. Okay, if you're brand new to PhotoP and you don't know where to begin, there's a couple areas that you can check out. There is a menu here at the top. You just have to click it and it'll open up some item, but you need to have a project open typically to see anything inside these. You'll notice a lot of these are grayed out. The other thing you can do is click on templates right here. And when I click on templates, it's going to open up a number of really cool templates. There's a filter over on the left-hand side. So for example, I'm gonna to go to Facebook and I can see there's some Facebook posts I can go to invitations, I can go to memes. There's lots of really cool items here inside of PhotoP. Just to get back to the beginning, you would just go back to the little X button here on the right hand side, and that'll just close that out and you're back into the main page. So templates is a really cool option. And if you wanna get started just on a brand new project, then you'd simply click new project right here. And then from here, you can select your size of your project. Now, if you're lazy, like me, you may wanna use these templates that are already set up. Or if you just wanna create a new project from scratch, you can do your height and your width on the top. So I'm gonna create a Merch by Amazon template. So I'm gonna go here to the top, I'm gonna to select pixels. Width on the pixels is 4,500. Height on the pixels is 5,400. And then my DPI, which is my pixels per inch, my dots per inch, I'm gonna do 300. My background, I've got the option here to do white, black, or transparent, and that's a big one, especially for Canva users, because free Canva users can't get a transparent background. I'm gonna click Create, and that now gets us to a transparent background, Merch by Amazon template, and we can get started creating a print-on-demand t-shirt design. If you'd like to import an image, it's actually pretty easy to do. You go up here to File, and then you go to Open in Place. What you don't want to do is go to Open. If I go to Open, and I import my image, it's actually gonna change the way this looks, it actually changed the, the size of my image. So I don't wanna do that. Okay, so let's go back to the start here. I'm gonna go File and then Open and Place. And now when I go to place my image, I simply open it and we can see it pops up inside my template. I can move it around. If you wanna change the size of the image, you simply click the corner or you can click the top or the bottom. It actually locks in the aspect ratio, which is a really nice feature. So you're not stretching the image. But if you wanna override that, simply hold down the Shift key and you can stretch it around and you can make it all sorts of weird wild stuff. If you'd like to create a shape in your design, it's pretty simple. Over on the left hand side, you're gonna look for a shape tool. Now I'm five or six from the bottom and I have an ellipse open, but you can click and hold on it. You might see a rectangle. So right there, you wanna click and hold your mouse down and you'll see a rectangle ellipse line, that kind of thing. I'm gonna to go to ellipse and then I'm just gonna drag my mouse that's gonna make a nice big ellipse, and it's going to default to the color of whatever's in my color palette. And the color palette's right down at the very bottom. You're gonna see black and white, and the black is slightly over the white. That means that the black is the foreground color. Now, if you'd like to change this color, you go over here to the layer on the right-hand side, right-click it, rasterize. That now makes it a true shape that you can now colorize. You can click on the color palette, change it to whatever color you'd like. I'll click OK. And now you just need to fill that. So over on the left-hand side, you're gonna see a little paint bucket icon. It might be a gradient tool. Just click on it and hold down, and you'll see it comes to a paint bucket. And then now, using my paint bucket, I can just hover over the item, and you'll see that it now changes. Now, if you're used to, in Photoshop, having a little marching ants around it, there's this Transform Controls button on the top, and you wanna make sure that's checkmarked. You'll see now I've got these little nodes that help me 
translate where I want to go. I can rotate, I can make it bigger, smaller, that kind of thing. You can always add layers as well. So over on the right hand side, there's a layers panel and down, down at the very bottom, there's a little tiny piece of paper with a, a little fold at the, in the corner. You're going to click on that and it's going to create a new layer. You can also name your layers by double clicking on the layer. I can type in a word like say triangle and then I can make a design. So I can go here to shapes, custom shape. I can then click, you'll see a triangle pops up. That's the default. If you wanted to move the layer, so for example, if I want to put this triangle underneath this shape, you can just simply drag it. So I'm going to grab the layer, I'm going to drag it down and it'll go now underneath the layer. Now I've got a background layer there. I'm just going to make sure that's down at the very bottom as well. And so now my triangle layer, I can move that around and it's in behind the circle. Layers are pretty cool and if you have a really complicated design, you might want a lot of different layers so you can move things around individually. Chances are your design's going to have a font in it or a text at some point. So over on the left hand side, I'm going to click the T button, hold it down and you'll see there's a type tool and a vertical type tool. That just means if you click the vertical type tool, it's going to go down vertically along the side, which is a nice feature. I'm going to click the type tool and then I'm going to click in my design. Now two things you want to watch out for before you start typing. One, what's the color of your text? color of your text will be at the top. You'll notice it's red and that's because it's like, oh, I've got my red palette selected. So I want to make sure that's black for example. So I've got the black palette down at the bottom. You want to make sure your text color is right here at the top. I'm going to change that to black and now whatever I type is going to be black. The other thing you want to watch out for is your size of your font. There's a slider. So I'm going to make my font nice and big, maximum size 150 and I'm going to start typing. And just like that, I've got my text selected. Now I can make it larger simply by dragging it out, but it's still font. If I click the T button and I click inside that box, I can still move things around. I can still edit it. That's a nice feature. If you want to change the font, I'm going to do control A. That's going to select all the font. And then over on the left hand side at the top, I've got a whole list of different fonts that I can use. Now if you let it load in, because this is an online program, it depends on your computer speed, it actually loads in and, and shows you what the a little preview of what the fonts look like, which is kind of nice. I'm going to go to Edo font and we'll see that that now gives me sort of an urban spray paint design. I'm going to make it a bit bigger. Okay, I've imported a photo here that of Rome and I'm going to use that in my design and I can edit this photo. It's just like Photoshop, which is really nice, very easy to do. Once you've imported your, your photograph, you go up to here to image and adjustments. Now there's a whole bunch of different options here. I'm not going to get into these in this video other than just to show you one example which is hue and saturation. I'll click on hue and saturation. A little slider window is going to open up. Pretty easy to do. I can simply just change the hue now on this. I can change the saturation and I can change the lightness or the darkness. So pretty easy to do. I'll click OK. Now if you don't like that or if you change your mind later on, that's OK. Over on the right hand side, you're going to see underneath the design itself, the picture, there's a little smart filters button. Just turn off the little eyeball and you'll see now you're back to the beginning. So you can toggle this. This is what they call a non-destructive edit because I haven't destroyed the picture. I've just simply layered something on top of it and I think that looks really cool. Now to save your design, it's pretty easy to do. You can go file and you can save as a PSD which is actually a Photoshop file. That's a really nice feature. Remember this is an online function so you can't, it's not going to be sitting on the internet forever. You need to save a copy onto your computer but if you want to save it or export it as a PNG file for example, you would export. So that's file, export as, PNG, JPEG, SVG. There's all sorts of different options here and I typically save a t-shirt design as a PNG because it has a transparent background and it looks pretty good on a t-shirt. I really hope you found this walkthrough helpful. Photopea is completely free. I highly recommend it, especially if you don't want to spend money on software and it's great for print on demand. Here's another video on how you can supercharge your print on demand journey for free.